In this video, we will learn how to manage a wrong or a faulty opening of an ICL while you've injected more than 2 by 3rd of it. We start by making an incision after the globe has been made taut with viscoelastic. For ICL, we would like to enlarge this wound to 3 mm because that's the best recommended size for the ICL. Once that is done, viscoelastic is injected but making sure that we don't over inject the viscoelastic. Now as we are getting ready to inject the ICL within the eye, we have to be very careful and notice how the ICL opens. Like in this case, it is opening vertically and upside down. Stop! Make sure that the ICL doesn't open completely and make sure it doesn't hit the endothelium. Let's see it in slow motion. As the lens is opening, the instrument from the left side is going to stop the lens from opening completely vertically and hitting the endothelium and making sure that the ICL doesn't open upside down. Now once that is done, the left hand stabilizes the ICL from opening completely and stopping it from touching the inner part of the cornea and making sure this is done. Now with the other hand or the main right hand, we go for the viscoelastic and make sure that we inject the viscoelastic within the unfolded IPCL. Let's see this also in slow motion again. In slow motion we will notice while the left hand stabilizes the ICL from opening completely and upside down, the right hand slowly goes and injects viscoelastic within the unfolded ICL and slowly, gradually, softly opens the lens in the right direction, thus ensuring that the endothelium of the cornea is not rubbed and also avoids the second procedure of explanting the ICL and putting it inside the eye. Once having done that, now you can proceed with the normal way of placing this ICL back in the eye pushing some viscoelastic on top of the ICL, making sure it's slightly backwards. Go in by tucking one of the haptics with a downward pull and slow down push and of the other haptic inside. Having done that, again viscoelastic is recommended that is instilled over the ICL to make sure that it again goes back. Once that is done, the same maneuver is repeated for the other two haptics, making sure that a very slow pressure and tucking of the loop behind the iris and similar move is repeated on the other side. Once this is done, what we need to do is align these two holes of the toric ICL to our 0180 marking. In this particular case, the lens was supposed to be inserted at 0180 so that is the place where the ICL goes inside the eye. Having done that, we slowly hydrate the wounds before we start our aspiration of viscoelastic to make sure because once we finish the irrigation aspiration of viscoelastic and pull out the irrigation cannula, sometimes the anterior chamber may collapse and cause re-rotation or forward ward of the ICL. Thus, we have evolved this technique of hydrating the wound prior to starting the irrigation aspiration. For this particular technique, it is recommended that the central hole of the ICL is the place from where we pull the viscoelastic out. What I have noticed is that it works excellent once you place your aspiration port 90 degree perpendicular to the central hole of the ICL, making sure that you're removing viscoelastic. This process has been fast forwarded and cut short and edited, though I would recommend a very meticulous viscoelastic removal, even though you can't take out the 100% viscoelastic from behind the fakic lens, but you should have an endeavor to remove maximum amount of viscoelastic. Thank you.